Oh, we shouldn't forget, in uh, seven days' time, and it's going to be announced live on The Breakdown, and it's going to be live at, from the uh, All Blacks Experience in town. We're going to name our first All Black squad for 2021. Not us. Of course, New Zealand Rugby are going to do that, and we're looking forward to seeing how many they put together and who it's going to be. One of those is a returning All Black from Japan, and he, I suppose he's excited. We'll talk to Brody Italic, Italic right now. He's in Napier. He's come out of uh, MIQ. He's back in New Zealand. Mate, well, welcome home. You're looking forward to, I suppose, pulling the boots on, but have you enjoyed spending a little bit of time back in Napier? And I, I hear today was a very special day. Yeah, it's um, definitely good to be back in New Zealand. Um, yeah, we've got it pretty good here in terms of COVID. There's a few restrictions of us in Japan and um, different things. And even coming back out of MIQ, just walking around without a face mask on, um, felt a little bit weird for a couple of days. But yeah, it's exciting to be back and um, waiting to see if I get named, obviously, next week and uh, looking forward to getting stuck into New Zealand rugby again. Konbanwa, Brody-san. Genki desu ka? How genki desu. Oh, no. Oh, no. There he goes. Now, they said you've just been eating raw fish, so you're six kilos down. Is that the truth? or, And if so, is that a bit of a worry for you coming straight back into test season? Yeah, I think old um, Smithy put it in the papers. So I was down to 117 kgs or something like that which um, was not quite true. Uh, I didn't quite get that light. Um, yeah, I guess obviously Japanese rugby isn't quite as physical as super rugby or, or test rugby, so you can get away with being a little bit lighter. Um, but I've been working pretty hard the last sort of three or four weeks of putting some weight back on and um, conditioning myself to get back and uh, hopefully play test rugby. So, yeah, I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. I feel like I can get around the paddock a lot better and a little bit lighter, but... Um, getting that balance of the two is probably going to be the key. Hey Brody, um, obviously in Japan over some pretty interesting times. Um, did you have a good experience and the family enjoy your time over there? Yeah, it was a little bit different this season. Um, we were had a few restrictions put on us. Understandably, obviously, if we got COVID um, within the team, we were out for two weeks. Um, so we, we would have loved to do a bit more travel of Japan, which we didn't get to, but um, on the whole, yeah, we loved the experience, the people, um, the culture, and it was just really refreshing to be in a different environment for a while and um, and see how the Japanese do it. And yeah, on, on the whole, we loved it, and it was great for the family and and uh, a whole lot of different reasons. It's great to see you back, and uh, I love your modesty, mate. I, I hope you get picked in this all black team as well, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> saying that, I mean, it would have been would have been diff difficult over there. I mean, you, you went over there, you played a lot of you know rugby for the All Blacks and for the Chiefs. Having COVID, was it a little bit of a blessing in disguise in terms of you, you've now been able to have a little bit of a rest as well over there during during this sort of the pandemic? Yeah, it was. A, I think. Um, in uh, the first season over there after the World Cup, we only played for five games. And then normally the off-season for the Japan season is about three months. But we actually ended up spending about seven months back in New Zealand. So um, it was I pretty much just did no training for about two and a half, half months and then have gone hard ever since. So, yeah, I'm hoping to rip some rewards out of that. And the body's in a good spot. It's had plenty of time to rest and um, do all that. So, yeah, I hope from uh, the next pushing on for the next couple of years, um, I'm going to reap the rewards of having that decent break and, and also a good pre-season to get the body conditioned. Have you had any contact with the coaches and management of the All Blacks over the, while you've been away, just to keep in contact, just, I suppose, to keep tabs on how you are feeling and how you are doing? Um, yeah, not too much. I've, I've talked to uh, Fozzie once since I've been back in New Zealand and um, Nick Gilder... Conditioning trainer, strength and conditioning trainer has been in touch to see how it's going. <laughs> Could be a bit of a program, but yeah, that's about it so far. I mean, you and Bowden are certainly going to be in the in the in the test side, although obviously I'm not the selector. But do you think it's wise coming straight back into a starting lineup, or would you actually prefer to get your feet on the ground a wee bit, get into some contact, get used to New Zealand rugby again, or you'd be confident either way? Um, yeah, it's probably a good question. Like, it's it's going to be a completely different level um, being back in the test arena. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be comfortable if I got put back into starting, but at the same time, I realise that being out of New Zealand, it's it's been different and I've got to earn my spot. So 
Um, yeah, I'm comfortable either way. It is going to be a little bit odd coming back in and getting used to it. But um, yeah, I guess I, if I feel like I can and obviously I earn my spot, then there's no reason why I'm not going to back myself. Gus, you spoke about the physicality uh, in, in Japan. I mean, how how difficult was that for you? I mean, you, you love going to rucks and getting and getting like well, hurting people and getting hit yourself. But then you've come up against guys that you know the, the the physical sort of side of it wasn't that big. And also on the on the flip side of that, when you come back, how have you sort of you know how are you going to try and adapt to that to, to get to that in intensity because it's totally different. Yeah, that's right. I um I still tried to have the same intent and. Uh, I actually uh, probably shouldn't say this, but I experienced my first red card in Japan, the pre-season game for a, <laughs> <laughs> for a big hit. <laughs> it was debatable, I thought. But um, <laughs> yeah, I guess that, that's probably the hardest part is, um, obviously, you know, in my mind, I'm still trying to be physical and um, I've worked hard at my technique. Obviously, the players over there are a lot smaller, so working on the body height and, yeah, I think um, that, that will be the area that will be the main, main focus in the next few weeks anyway. We're excited to have you back. I think every decision is debatable, but JK certainly does. Every decision that's ever been made. But, like, it's great to have you with us. We saw how refreshed and how impressive Sam Whitelock has been since he has come back from his sojourn overseas. So, mate, look after yourself. Can't wait to see you back out there. I'm pretty sure in seven days' time we'll see you name right out. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no worries. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, it's, uh, I think there's a little bit of a sense of relief, I think, for me, him, that he's back. You know, it, it gives us something, an experience. We know how good and how great he has been as an All Black. Um, it'd be nice to think that by the, the end of this season, um, he's getting close back to that form. But we see everyone that seems to come back now. They seem to be refreshed and ready to go. Yeah, I think so. And two years out from a World Cup, really important that he's had a break and he feels refreshed and he comes back and he's actually excited about playing in New Zealand again. Let's talk about the squad then, JK. The fact that Ian Foster and, and Grant Fox and his team, John Plumtree, uh, they had the benefit of a season last year of coming together. Um, there are no guarantees. They've got work to do. Performances, a couple of back-to-back -back losses last year. You know, so all of a sudden, is there an element of pressure? Maybe not pressure. Tonga, Fiji, Fiji, but this first selection. And is the big question mark how they might play? Yeah, I think they need to start thinking about... I mean, you, you haven't got a long-term contract, but you've got to start thinking about the World Cup. I think we don't have a lot of test matches. I mean, I, I think, you know, with Brodie coming back and Sam playing the way he is, we have world-class locks. What do you do? You know, we need a third lock, Scott. Barrett, you know, what, what are you going to do around some of your bench and some of your fringes seems to be the bigger question for me. Is there going to be some bolters? I'm obviously hoping that Robinson from the Blues will get in because I think he can cover six and lock. So what are you going to do now to build your squad? But, you know, we talk about it all the time, don't we? It's, it's not just your 15 anymore. What are you going to do with the bench? Where are you going to put Bowden? What are you going to do? So there's a lot of intrigue in this, and I'm quite excited about the, the, the team. I don't think the team is going to throw up too well, many new players. Well, but look, uh, look, we've lost Sam Kane, so there's going to be a new captain uh, who's going to get that responsibility, Mills, but also the fact that, look, uh, Adi Savia, he did limp off on the weekend. I'm hopeful that he comes through and he's fine to play, but if he's not, no Sam Kane, no Adi Savia. We know Dalton Papali'i, but he's under a little bit of an injury cloud. Um, he's been banged up a little bit, so... Is there room for players, some players that we haven't seen before in this squad? Oh, it's hard. It's hard to actually to see. You know? I mean, I think the, they, they took, took a pretty big squad over to Aussie last year as well. So is there going to be any bolters? I'm not sure there will be. I'm, you know, when you lose those sort of guys, you know, the Sam Keynes, Artie Savez, I think they'll still be all right. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of leadership you know, around the, you know, the, the whole team in terms of the squad and different positions that they can cover that sort of for those guys being out. I'm more looking forward to the way they play. You know, are they going to take this, the same sort of mentality that most of our Super Rugby teams have played here in New Zealand in the way they've done, or are they going to try and change things up? Bowden, yeah, Bodhi and also Moonga, you know, what are they going to do? Are they going to play uh, dual maker roles? Because you know, they're, 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 two different, they're two very good players. So what is Ian Foster? What, what has he gone away and thought about in his team in terms of the way we actually play the game? Are we going to show something different? So then the likes of Aussie ha don't adapt, you know, too fast. Because so, they have, you know, in, in super, the Trans-Tasman, those teams are really starting to adapt. So are they going to take the same approach as what the, our Super Rugby teams have or throw something totally different? And do they have the opportunity now to be able to do that in those first, you know, three or so test matches, which we should win quite comfortably, Hannah. Yeah, I think so. And look, they took a number of new players last year, seven new caps last year, and a number that didn't get a lot of test match rugby. So I think it would be a really good opportunity to play those players, give them some game time, and actually get some consistency through the 15. Because in some ways, JK, how much can you read into 
the last five weeks in terms of form when you're selecting your team, which, let's be honest, the focus surely is going to be on the rugby championship. The fact that we'll be taking on South Africa on the back of playing the Lions. Argentina, when they came in fresh, were very, very good last year. Is more attention, not so much, we'll put out a quality side, but more importantly, with no Nani Laumapi in the midfield, he's heading offshore, unless they decide to pick him, which I can't see that happening. Does that mean if you're going down a David Harvey path, there's a different tactical approach to the game? Well, I think there's a different tactical approach straight away by us letting Nani Laumapi go, because it's probably the first time for how I don't know how long that we haven't had someone like Ma'a or some like Nani who, who, who can get us over the advantage line with brute strength, right? So we're not going to look like we're going to have that, so we're going to have a little bit of a different um, sort of backline look, I feel. What, what I, I think Mills is right, you know, the All Black selectors and coaches do have the opportunity to say, we want to play like this and we'll pick accordingly. Mm. And so I think that's probably intriguing for me. I think loose forward is a real issue. You know, I think that I was sort of, when Sam got injured, unfortunately, I thought, well, this is going to be Artie's opportunity to get out there and go for it. Now, clear, we don't know he's not going to be available. What I'm saying is the fact he just, he just took another knock on the weekend, and it's a what if, right? That's what we're dealing with right now. Yeah, well, that's right. But when you think about it, normally we've got a hundred of them, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. you're sort of going, oh, Hattie's not going to be there. It might not be. Let's hope he is. But all of a sudden, going because the game is changing a wee bit. You know, we don't have. You know, you're talking about Bowden playing fullback. Anna, you said yeah. that a couple of weeks ago. You know, we've got guys are now playing six, seven, and eight, and so the game is changing quite a bit. For me, it's Mills is onto it. How are we going to play, and what are we going to bring new? And do we bring it this year, or do we wait for a little bit closer to the World Cup? We do, do we think? You know, we've so often targeted the fact we, we need to match everybody up front. But if you think about the era, Hannah, where we, 2011, 2015, it was our, our way that we played the game, how we used the ball. Is that something that we've tried that we can't succeed with? Or do we go back to that and go, what, that's our plan A? Yeah, it'll be interesting what they test through these test matches, right, to get right for when they come up against the South Africans and the Argentinas. Um, I think it'll be a mixture of both. I think tactically we actually need to play that tactical game. We haven't been playing a lot of it through um, against the Australian team, so I think we actually need to go back to that and, and start playing some controlled rugby. Do you agree, Mills, with the fact that, you know, like we're, it's one of those things, it's a hard one, right, because we've got so much mobility, we've got so much versatility, that, that selection policy around, and JK talks about it all the time, specialists versus that guys who can play multiple positions. It's been the hallmark of our game, really, up, up front, making sure you have those specialists that get it right. Everything's been built, our whole game in New Zealand's been built around our forward pack and that go forward ball, and then you add a bit of this, bit of um, you know speed and skill, because there's no doubt doubting that our skill level here is a lot better than anywhere across the world, you know, and that, that's my opinion. But um, also, I think what you've just mentioned, the ability, and I was just going to say boring rugby, but I, I like the way you, you've just sort of put it, that sort of traditional making sure we get down there, be nice and composed. I think that's that's where we've often struggled, um, that we want to open the game up and, and feel that we need to to do that in, in, in big test matches when it's really close, when in actual fact, you know, let's be nice and patient. So perhaps it's, this is now a vehicle for them to, to trial that um, in these first three weeks before we get to the unknown, because South Africa is actually unknown. We haven't seen them for a couple of years, so they could be totally different. Absolutely. Uh, uh, all of them, uh, all the selectors and coaches, they're in Wellington uh, watching the Hurricanes game. I'm sure they're in Auckland watching that game as well. It's all in front of them over the next seven days, putting together the, their squad.